hello everybody we are going to start our series of uh, lectures on hydrostatics and stability um, this will be the first course that you are doing on uh, in naval architecture in, in the department so um, so this will be an introductory course first we will be dealing with the um, some of the basic principles then into more advanced concepts in hydrostatics and stability now the the course will be divided into the following um, into the following percentage will be used uh, homeworks mid semester and end semester examination the textbook that we are following will be ship hydrostatics and stability by adrian biran now this book is available in the uh, library as well as it is um, um, available in the market and uh, this is the most standard book used for uh, hydrostatics and stability that is adrian biran is the name of the author and we are also we will also be using another book that is merchant ship stability that is the second book uh, that is by ar lester um, both books will be used uh, for this course um, ar lester it is a book on problems mostly and uh, so you will be um, able to solve problems which will give you an idea of what to do uh, when face such face with such problems in naval architecture now if i had to um, so as i said before this will be the first course that you are doing in uh, the department so this is the primary course that everybody does when they enter into the naval architecture department um, uh, of mainly there are four four types of uh, courses that you'll you'll be uh, faced with in uh, in the course of your btech or mtech program there will be courses on hydrostatics and stability that is what i'm going to teach this semester then there will be courses on hydrodynamics that is a second um, second thing uh, second thing that is hydrodynamics uh, i'll explain quickly what are the uh, different what will be the different uh, uh, aspects of the uh, these different things that I'm, i have written here then thirdly we will be dealing with courses on structures um, where you will be doing structural computation on ships so hydrodynamics is about the fluids and structures is about the solids then finally you will have a lot of courses on design and construction um, where you deal with the pro, uh, parameters of uh, design like general arrangement cat cam um, you will be dealing with softwares like max surf etc uh, it is uh, another aspect of naval architecture so hydrostat uh, first of all as i told you we will be dealing with courses on hydrostatics and stability um, what what does this subject really uh, uh, contain what does it really uh, is it about now hydrostatics is basically about the conditions under which the vessel is subjected to you know we will be studying the conditions at which the vessel uh, is subjected to different loads and moments and um, and we will be dealing with its ability to remain afloat means even though the ship is um, ship is subjected to different kinds of loads and moments we try to see how good it is at remaining afloat as well as straight um, we'll go into the straight uh, parameters next now um, so this involves param this involves study of uh, things like buoyancy which is the ability of the water to push up the vessel and um, the weight of the vessel itself which brings brings it down so one acting downwards one acting upwards the weight weight of gravity acting downwards and the weight of buoyancy acting upwards uh, the balance of these two which is of course the archimedes principle that we'll come to in the next lecture so you will have these parameters then uh, you will be that is one aspect of hydrostatics then you will be dealing with trimming um, trimming literally means that if uh, you have a vessel um, if you have a vessel like this if uh, if you have a vessel like this what is the ability uh, that is what is the what happens when the ship goes like this when it tilts in this 
uh, what we call as longitudinal and transverse directions that is what this is. This is known as a longitudinal direction that is the direction in which in direction in the uh, direction in the uh, length of the ship along the length of the ship and um, this is tra called transverse. So, if you have a ship like this, then this direction we usually call it as longitudinal and this direction we call it as transverse and the third one of course is known as the vertical. So, we have three uh, directions of uh, three directions for our uh, ship we have the longitudinal transverse and the vertical directions. So, of these if you have the longitudinal if this is the longitudinal uh, if this is the longitudinal part this is the transverse part and this is the vertical part suppose that the ship uh, is turning like this it is called trimming there are a lot of conditions associated with trimming and if the ship tilts like this like this this if this is a longitudinal direction and if it tilts like this it is known as healing and uh, so these are parameters that you need we will be dealing with what happens to a ship when it undergoes such movements uh, either trimming or healing or there are other kinds of movements also pitching, rolling, heaving like that, uh, that and all we will do later. So these conditions will uh, be dealing th these conditions are um, studied under the co concept of stability and hydrostatics. Then uh, finally, the main thing that is how the vessel re is able to restore itself to an upright position after being inclined by wind, sea or conditions of loading. By loading we mean what goes into the ship at the time of um, sailing, when it is sailing what is the weight on the ship that is what you mean by loading of a ship, loading in a ship or loading um, on the ship is given by these parameters then that is first of all what we will be dealing with in hydrostatics. Then the next one the next important concept that we will be dealing with is uh, not in this course of course that the, the next important thing that you will be dealing with in some other courses will be hydrodynamics. Hydrodynamics concerns the flow of water around the ship's hull and over bodies such as propeller blades or rudder or through thruster tunnels. Anyway first of all it is it concerns the study of flows hydrodynamics is the study of flows um, so the main flow is so if a ship is like this it usually has a propeller at the end a rudder at the end and uh, the and a lot of people uh, spe uh, do a lot of research on how the flow occurs across the uh, propeller blades uh, propeller is rotating here at the back of the ship in the behind part of the ship and uh, water comes and goes so uh, so that is dealing with uh, propulsion um, will be uh, there will be different studies of uh, the flow around such um, propellers then there will be studies of resistance resistance is means resistance towards the motion of motion in water primarily caused due to the flow of water around the hull powering calculation is done based on this so what it means is that when you have a ship and it literally plows through water uh, it will be uh, facing it will be encountering drag uh, so this drag will uh, cause the ship to slow down and it takes power that is what the engines develop the it takes in uh, the engine power to move against this drag offered by water so study of that where you deal with different kinds of resistances wave resistance skin friction resistance etc is known as um, resistance calculations resistance studies that is done also in hydrodynamics then uh, we go into propulsion i already mentioned propulsion you um, that is to move the vessel through the water using the propellers water jets or thrusters the energy to drive these is primarily provided by the internal combustion engines some vessels are electrically powered now this is the second aspect of uh, hydrodynamics we deal with propulsion um, 
uh, as 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 just said it is the action of propeller it is the action of the propeller that moves the ship forward the propeller itself is rotated by by the help of engines and uh, the engines are connected to the propeller through shafts and because of this movement uh, there is a uh, there is the um, revolving of the propeller and because of the thrust developed due to the revolving of the propeller the ship moves forward so that is propulsion then there is a lot of ship motions um, this would uh, i would put this under a category of uh, uh, category of problems known as sea keeping so um, this is a different class of problems this is known as sea keeping and uh, another thing that comes along with it is controllability or uh, we call it maneuvering so maneuvering uh, co controllability and maneuvering so sea keeping and maneuvering is another course by itself that is also part of this nptl you you can watch that uh, so we have these different parts that are coming under the category of hydrodynamics and then structures uh, structures is a different uh, category of problems whereby you um, whereby you will be dealing with um, the structural strength the structural rigidity the ship strength really it will be dealing with the structural uh, aspects of the um, of the ship uh, you know studying different things like the strength of the girder strength of the bulkhead the how many bulkheads should be there bulkheads these are all th uh, terms in naval architecture which you will be uh, uh, coming across in um, the coming years you will be dealing with these um, you will be dealing with these courses which deal with uh, structures and even the vibration of structural components uh, comes under this category the vibration of floating structures is a, again another huge topic of study uh, different types of uh, move, different types of a ship uh, a ship or a offshore platform undergoes different types of uh, loads wave loads on it which cause wave loads current loads etc on it which cause it to um, uh, which which causes f fatigue in it and it causes um, different structural pro problems so studying all those comes under the category of structures and then finally and then we also have different kinds of ships we have oil tankers gas tankers cargo ships bulk carriers container ships these are different types of ships then you can have passenger ferries cruise ships warships which come which in which come the category in the category of warships comes frigates destroyers aircraft carriers amphibious ships etc then you have of course you know submarines and underwater vehicles ice breakers then in ocean engineering you know that we come across we deal with other aspects um, not just the um, the ships we deal with the offshore platforms as well on that comes offshore drilling platforms semi submersibles then there are different kinds of small crafts which are and small crafts and unconventional crafts as we call it they are the uh, some of the high speed crafts hover craft multi hull ships hydrofoil craft etc then small work boats like barges fishing boats anchor handling tugs platform supply vessels tug boats pilot vessels rescue craft etc and yachts uh, different kinds these are some of the different types of uh, vessels that um, you you will be coming across and um, and finally in this um, there is also as i said before there is also the design and construction that is a third uh, there is a fourth category of uh, problems ship design problems this basically involves uh, cad cam computer aided design computer aided manufacturing it lot of things come under this category um, uh, the design of uh, vessels is a co again a full course in itself and then you have you can uh, in fact it's two courses uh, and uh, cad cam and design these are things that um, um, that is very involving involved and uh, that will be another course that you will be dealing with then 
uh, I, here I am just giving an introduction uh, to you for different types of uh, uh, terms and terms and uh, uh, the different information about naval architecture where you will be dealing with um, all these things in the coming years. Now there is also something known as a classification society. Uh, it is a non-governmental organization in the shipping industry often referred to as class. Now these classification societies establish and maintain the standards for the construction and classification of ships and offshore structures. Now they, uh, or they also supervise the construction and make sure that the ships that are constructed uh, follow this standard. They make sure that the, uh, the ships are following these uh, standards. Now there are different classification societies. The most important of the, uh, the most uh, commonly seen one is Lloyd's Register or American Bureau of Shipping. As the name itself suggests, uh, they uh, one, uh, this is from um, Lloyd's Register is from in, uh, UK and uh, American Bureau of Shipping is from the US. Then there is Bureau Veritas and in India also we have a, such a classification society. This is known as the Indian Register of Shipping IRS. IRS, these are the years in which the uh, given are the years in which these um, um, classification societies came into uh, came into uh, being used, and um, these. Okay, now uh, this is just an introduction to some terms in naval architecture. Now we will enter into the subject of hydrostatics and stability. Um, first of all, uh, we need to know some um, standard terms, uh, sta standard common notations that we use in naval architecture. We will be using these throughout the length of the course, so you will have to be familiar with it. First of all, uh, we come across, uh, if you look, we come across, let us assume that this is a ship this is the forward part of the ship and this is the backward part of the ship. Now suppose you are looking from here, okay, looking viewing it from the back, back side. The right hand side of the ship is known as starboard and the left hand side of the ship is known as port. So the, this is a standard notation used for um, the um, used throughout in naval architecture. So, if you are looking from back, the side, the what you see on the right hand side is known as starboard, and what you see on the left hand side is known as uh, that side is known as port. So, port and starboard sides. Also, um, there are some other terms like um, this region, the back side of the ship is known as aft of the ship. This is known as the aft of the ship. It is also known as the stern of the ship. Stern, aft, uh, the backward side all stands for the same thing. It uh, represents the back side of the ship. Then on the front side, this is known as the front of front side of the ship. It is known as forward side. It is known as um, bow, the bow of the ship. So these are some terms used, um, aft and stern representing the back side of the ship and uh, this representing the front, front side of the ship is called bow of the ship. Okay. Then uh, if you have a ship like this, Um, suppose this is the rudder, rudder is the instrument in the ship which causes the ship to uh, maneuver or um, move, you know in what causes the ship to turn and uh, not move sorry turn, what causes the ship to turn around uh, is a rudder, rudder is an aero hydrofoil and this uh, rudder we pass a line through this rudder this line, this is a vertical line and this line is, is known as an aft perpendicular. This line at the uh, aft of the ship which pass, passes through the rudder stock 
the axis of the rudder is known as the aft perpendicular. Similarly, we have a um, we have a small region at the front. Another vertical line passing through the front is known as the forward perpendicular. Now this is always known as AP and this is always known as FP. So AP and FP are um, are the two lines that pass through the two ends of the ship. Rem remember there is a little part of the ship that is behind the arc perpendicular still there is a little part of the ship that is forward of the forward perpendicular as well. It is not exactly at the front it is slightly away from the front. So you have the forward and the arc perpendicular then this line at the bottom is usually known as the base line or it is also known as keel k e e l keel um, then now this now if as you know when a ship is floating in water a part of the ship will be under the water a part of the ship will be outside the water and um, so there is a air water interface there is a region of air water interface and this interface um, is known as the water line we call it as a water line this line this line here is known as the water line WL we usually designate it as WL it is the water line uh, it is also known as the design water line design water line water line etc and um, uh, then there are um, some more parameters this whole distance is known as the depth of the ship or the, uh, the what you really mean by the height of the ship is really is what we call as the depth it extends the distance from the keel of the ship to the top of the deck to the top the whole thing is known as the depth of the ship and um, it you can have different depths in the forward and the aft side because uh, the forwards it is not symmetrical between from along the longitudinal direction it is not symmetrical but remember that always we consider the ship to be symmetrical in the transverse direction means the starboard side of the ship and the port side of the ship are just mirror images of each other all calculations are done based on this assumption and it is more or less uh, designed like that and so uh, calculations are um, slightly easier there. So this whole length is known as the depth of the ship and the part of the ship that is below the water line below the water line this is known as a water line I told you. So below the design water line or the this is also known as load water line LWL the region the part of the ship that is below this uh, water line this distance is known as the draft of the ship it is either written as draft draft or draau ghd draught both of them represent the same thing one is the british um, uh, british spelling and the other is american spelling both representing the same thing this is the draft of the ship then um, as you can see there can be different drafts in the forward and the backward direction backward part so you have the forward draft uh, the aft draft and the region above this this is known as the freeboard this region we call it as a freeboard then um, the distance between the aft perpendicular and the forward perpendicular this whole distance which is pretty much the length of the ship is known as LPP LPP the length between perpendiculars it is also written as LBP for length between perpendiculars but it is usually written as L length from perpendicular to perpendicular LPP this is the distance between the aft perpendicular so aft perpendicular and forward perpendicular the distance between these two is known as LPP the length between perpendiculars then the whole as as you see from this figure at the deck you you have a different length at the deck this whole thing this whole length is uh, known as um, 
length OA, LOA, the length overall. So, the distance between the uh, end, the aftmost part of the ship and the forward part of the ship, uh, the distance uh, in the deck, in the deck region, the distance between the aft of the ship and the forward part of the ship, that distance we call it as LOA, uh, length overall. So, you have two lengths whenever you write the details of the ship, remember you have two lengths LPP and LOA, length overall and length. Then this region at the center is known as midship. It is as the name itself suggests, it is the mid part of the whole region, it is known as midship. A midship is usually, midship is usually given by the symbol like this, it is usually written like this. So, if you see something written like this in a, a naval architecture uh, chart or a naval architecture diagram on a what we call it as a lines plan, if you see this kind of thing written anywhere, it means a midship, uh, it is amid uh, the uh, length of the ship. Then there are two types of motions of the ship, uh, which are also important here. One is, suppose this represents a ship, this is the longitudinal direction of the ship and this is the transverse direction of the ship. Okay. So, suppose a ship moves like this. It is the uh, it is the movement of the ship in um, in a transverse direction. The uh, rotational motion of a ship in a transverse direction is known uh, known as heeling, or the dynamic part of it, which means that the, it is continuously moving. The dynamic part of it is known as rolling. Therefore, you have heeling, rolling. Uh, two two aspects of heeling and rolling. Um, then uh, if the ship is in the longitudinal direction like this, if the ship moves like this, okay, this type of motion is known as trimming. That is known as trim. Trim means the motion and that is trimming. Then um, Okay, then we come, come into what we call it as, uh, this is something that you will be doing, um, this is one course by itself, it is known as um, lines plan drawing. So this, there is a word lines plan. So we need to uh, discuss a little bit about lines plan before you go into doing such uh, a thing. Um, a lines plan. I mean, you people have already done the engineering drawing course. Um, so, in that you would have done uh, what we call it as the front view, top view and the side view. So, this is usually done in, in the engineering drawing. You see things from the different points of view and you draw it in a particular order. So, here also we have the same thing. We have, we have a front view which will look something like this. So, this is a front view, then you will have a top view, top view of the ship will look something like this. So, this is the top view of the ship and you will have a side view of the ship. So, these, there, these are three, three views of the ship. You see it from the, this is front view means actually you are seeing from the side you might say, actually you are looking at from one side, that is what we call it as front view and then the top view looking from above and looking from one, uh, looking really from the front uh, is really, it is what is known as the, um, uh, this view. Now these views have their own characteristic names in naval architecture. For instance, this view is known as the shear plan. Shear plan, this is known as waterline plan, or and this is known as the body plan. Now, before we uh, do the lines plan itself, there are some terms that 
uh, we need to be familiar with. First of all, suppose that you have a ship like this. Now, I told you we draw a line here which is known as the half perpendicular. There is a we draw a line here which is known as the forward perpendicular. Now, there is this distance between the two perpendiculars. Now, suppose that we divide the distance between the half perpendicular and the forward perpendicular into let us say 10, uh, 10, 10 regions into 10 lines. We split it with, uh, with uh, an n number of lines to divide the region between the half perpendicular and forward perpendicular. When we do that, for instance, let us see, I am splitting it with 1, 2, 3, 4 lines. I have divided this into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 spaces and 5 lines. These lines that split the, uh, split the shear plan into n spaces is known as, the each of these is known as a station. the stations. So, these are all the stations. We call the half perpendicular as usually station 0, station 1, station 2, station 3, station 4 and station 5 in this case. Usually, we uh, have about station, uh, 10 stations on all over the ship. Uh, from the uh, rear of the ship to the front of the ship, we have about, um, we will have about 10 stations. Uh, so, these are known as stations. So, as you can see this length of the ship has been divided into different sections that these are known as the stations. Same way we can divide suppose that this is the um, if I had to consider this to be the, uh, the depth of the ship. Suppose I make sections like this, I cut it like this slice the, the this whole thing I slice it in this fashion and then you will get. So, you will be getting sections like this. You will have sections like this at different regions. Then you will have like this. So, going from the back to the uh, going from top to bottom or from uh, from bottom to top, you come across section, uh, sections like this. Okay, these these sections are called water planes, they we call them as water plane. These sections are called as water planes and these lines are known as these lines that look like this are known as water lines. So, right now you have two types of um, things, you have the um, you have the water water lines and the stations. So, these lines when you look from the top the side the the uh, the the edge of the ship which the part when you, when you draw a line through that from looking from top uh, you get what you get is are known as um, water lines. Now, there is a third type of um, lines se series of lines that is possible that is known as uh, that is if you take the this to be the length of the ship. Okay, this is the longitudinal direction and this is the transverse direction of the ship and you slice it like this from here. If you slice it like this, like this, when you look from above, uh, when you, um, so if this is the whole length of the ship, if you slice it uh, in this direction. these lines will look in the front view like this. Front view like this. So, these lines will look like this in the front view. These lines are known as buttock lines. These lines are known as the buttock lines. So, we, ha we now have three types of lines. We have the stations, we have the water lines and the buttock lines. Then, so once you have this, um, we will have to deal with, we, we will now deal with the lines plan. So, a lines plan will um, look like this.
these are your water lines this is the shear plan okay the looking from this this view is the shear plan and these lines are known as water lines and here you have the stations and you will have some lines that look like this lines looking like this these lines are the buttock lines these lines uh, these lines are the water lines and these lines are the stations so this is how your shear plan will look like at the end at the end of your drawing your shear plan will look like this and your uh, body plan uh, this uh, water lines plan as it is called will look like this i just told you before that the two sides of the ship that is the port and starboard sides the port and starboard sides are identical we have only uh, i mean the left side the ports left side of the ship is very symmetrical to the right side of the ship so we really need to draw only one half of the ship in the transverse direction not whole length of the ship on, but only one half of the ship only one half we need to draw because the other half is exactly the same so we draw only the half half of the uh, breadth of the ship not the length half the breadth of the ship that is known as a half breadth plan so this is also known as a half breadth plan um, because only half the breadth is drawn half breadth plan it is also known as the uh, of course it is also known as the water lines plan water lines plan and this is and so uh, here you will have some um, so you will have some straight lines these are the buttock lines and you will have some lines these stations like this you will have all the stations now we go into the third plan which will look like this this is the view as you will see if you are looking from the bow of the ship now this will look like different lines will look like this these are the different stations stations as you can imagine a station is a um, as ship, as i told you the station is a sectional uh, region like this sectional uh, cutting like this so if you look from here the ship it will look like this a curve a curve it will be maximum curved in the midship midship will be the deepest the depth will be maximum at the midship and as you keep, as you keep going to the bow the ship's ship kind of um, curves up the curve of the ship will be going up therefore the plan will become like this finally it will look like this and again just as i said before we draw only one half of the ship this half of the ship will be identical to this half of the ship so we adopt a uh, smart strategy we say that we this side of the ship will draw will do the the front of the ship the forward of the ship on the right side and the aft part of the ship is drawn on the left side so this will look something like this like this so the aft of the ship will look something it will look like this and the forward part of the ship will look something like this so uh, this is the aft and the forward part of the ship and this is known as the body plan now it is very very important that all these plans match in uh, you know different points in all these plans the three plans the uh, they match in terms of um, points each point in the uh, shear plan should match with a point in the 
water uh, water lines plan and it should match with a point in the body plan for instance if a point here is let's say this is station 9 it stays in station 9 here this should come in station 9 here also and if it is on water line let's say this is water line 5 or 6 water line 6 if it is on water line 6 then it should come on the same water line here so it is on station 9 let's say this is station 9 so it will be on station 9 and it will be on such a water line so water line same line these are all of course engineering drawing um, one does but uh, so but it's very important that all the three all the three uh, views match that is the body plan uh, the body plan the uh, half breadth plan and the shear plan so all three the points that i mention in each of these should match uh, otherwise the drawing is not right and in addition we say that the lines plan should be fair fairing is a process in which um, the lines are smooth it is not just important that the points match it is also important that all the lines that you have are smooth you know if the if there are abrupt discontinuities and abrupt uh, uh, curves and abrupt curvatures in different parts of the uh, ship it cannot be it is not practical to construct the ship so um, so we so it is important to fare these uh, fare these plans and in addition we have so while um, uh, this these this information so once you have the lines plan you have complete information about the ship all the it is enough to draw the ship but there is also a way in which this plans this uh, details of the ship are written in a uh, more in a concise form which also gives you the information about the ship this we call it as the table of offsets or it is known as the offset table so table of offsets or offset table is a table that looks like this uh, it looks like this So in this table uh, it will look like this there will be a series of stations the horizontal this you see if you call this as the i and the j the i is uh, i equal to all this is represents the half breadth uh, I mean it represents the station 0 station first station second third fourth stations like that and the vertical lines represent the water line 0 1 2 3 and so when you say that this is let us say 0.25 it means that the station 0 at station 0 and water line 0 at the station 0 and water line 0 the half breadth is 0 0.25 so as i said similarly you have uh, at so this what you have written here is the half breadth uh, it is for a particular station and for a particular water line so that is known as um, this whole thing is known as the offset table so you will have a complete table like this 0 0.25, 0 0.23, 0 0.15 uh, you will have the different half breadths at different stations uh, in, this will be increasing 0 0.35 so these are these are known as the table of offsets or the offset table then um, in naval architecture we come across okay actually I have here some of these uh, drawings uh, these drawings this represents a uh, body plan of a ship known as USS Olympia this is the body plan as you can see this is uh, this represents station 0 0.5 now that is another possibility suppose you divide the stations in from 1 to 20 here you as you can see station there are 20 stations okay 20 stations now you 
need not have just 1, 2, 3, 4 integer number of stations. It is also possible to have some intermediate stations like for example, 0 0.5 station. Uh, so, this station, so this station is 0 0.5 station 1 and then this is uh, 1.5, 2, 3, 4, 5. These, these stations as you can see are going uh, towards the midship. This is a midship. So, this station 10 is the midship, station 11 is also midship. So, you have a, uh, these two things more or less symmetrical station 10 and 11. Then you go uh, to the forward side, I mean this is the aft side, this is the forward side and this is the aft side. Right hand side represents the forward side, the left hand side represents the aft side. So, it goes up, uh, goes up to station 19.5, uh, 20. The station at the forward most part is 20. So, and uh, these are the, uh, this is the body plan. Now, this represents for the same ship a shear plan. Shear plan as I told you before is the view from one side. So, this is the how the ship looks like. This is its, these lines are the buttock lines. Uh, the stations are given here, this is the aft perpendicular as you can see um, and this is the forward perpendicular. So, you will have um, uh, these lines, these are the buttock lines. So, this is the uh, shear plan and on the other side and then you will have the body uh, half bread plan. This represents the half, half the side of the ship, this represents for, for most probably the port side of the ship. This is the port and uh, these are different water lines, water line 4, water line 8 like that, different water lines uh, look like this. Uh, so, these are the different um, uh, views of the ship in the lines plan. Now, we go into something that we uh, call it as the, we call it as the coefficients of form. Now, uh, these are different coefficients that we use. Um, these coefficients of form are ratios of various, uh, these coefficients of form are the ratios of various uh, parameters on the ship. The first one and the most important one is known as the block coefficient. Is known as the block coefficient. Block coefficient is defined as CB it is a very important parameter and this is equal to del divided by L B T. Here del represents this I did not mention, I should have mentioned del is known as the, the del is the displacement, volume displacement of the ship. This is the volume displacement of the ship means what is the, that is a volume uh, volume uh, underwater that is what is known as del. The volume underwater is known as the volume of displacement and that is known as del here and into LBT. So, what you are doing is really you have a ship and um, you have a ship and um, LBT is this underwater volume which is um, like a which which is like a rectangle l into b into t so that gives you another volume here l is the length of the ship b is the breadth of the ship and t is the draft of the ship not the depth of the ship it is the draft of the ship so, this is known as um, the block coefficient, block coefficient C B given by del divided by L B T. Um, then this is the first coefficient of form, these, these as I told you these things are called as coefficients of form, uh, first is block coefficient, then next one is something known as midship coefficient. Uh, this thing is known, this is known as a midship coefficient. Midship coefficient is defined as a m, it is usually written as c m, 
it is known as A m divided by B into T. Now, A m is the sectional area midship sectional area uh, A m is known as the midship sectional area. Um, so, A m divided by B into T uh, the midship sectional area is if you have the ship like this then this is the uh, this this area that is known as a midship sectional area uh, area underwater of course area underwater which is on that slice that area in the midship section this is known as the midship sectional area so midship sectional area divided by b into t b is the breadth t is the draft so by that b into t this is known as the midship uh, sectional area uh, we have a couple of more coefficients of form that we will continue in the next lecture so, for this lecture, uh, I will stop here, okay, thank you.